Hello and welcome to a feature showcase on the new KV store inside of Kestra. Now inside of the namespaces tab, you can now access the KV store, which stores key value pairs inside of a namespace. Now, why does this exist? Now, one reason is privacy. Kestra never wants to store your private data. So this is really useful for being able to store information. And then the database only has reference to the key value pair rather than the data itself. This is instead stored in the user's private cloud bucket. This is also helpful because you can switch between additions very easily as the implementation is the same. Now, this is useful if you're looking to maybe store state between executions, so you can check what a previous execution was able to do. Maybe you're making an API request where you want to check what that value was, if it was successful or not, and you can store that here. So I'm gonna walk you through a few examples of how you can set and get these key value pairs, as well as how you can use them inside your workflows. Now, jumping into Kestra, we're presented by the new namespaces page that's available in open source. And if we go to our namespace company.team, we can actually go over to the key value store on the right hand side. And here we can see a one of the values I've already got. Now to make a new one, it's really easy. All I have to do is click new key value where it will ask me for the information. Now the key can be a string that's got upper or lower case characters and must be an ASCII character. So that's quite easy to do there. But then the type is really up to you. There is loads of options, as you can see here, including string, number, Boolean, date, time, date, duration, as well as JSON. So you've got loads of options there. You can also put the value of it in here, and then you can also set an expiration. So if you want this to only last maybe a week or two, then you can set that up as well. Now, I'm just gonna simply just create a quick test example to show it working. So here I've created my key test and I've got my value hello. And when I press save, we can see that it adds it in here and we can see when it was created as well as when it's gonna expire, which is in five minutes time. Now I can also edit this. So if I want to come in and change that for key value pair, I can do that too but I can also just go in here and delete it too. So I can get rid of it all together. So you can actually also set and get these key value pairs as tasks as well. So if you wanna be able to implement them directly into your workflow, you can do that too. In this example I have here, we've got a simple HTTP download task that's downloading a CSV file. And then I can simply just set that CSV file into our key value store with the key, my key. And so if I execute this task now, we can see that once it is finished and I go to namespace, the namespace we had in mind and key value store, I can see that it's in there. And if I press edit, we can see a link to the internal storage of the CSV file. Now, the way that you might express this in a task is by using KV and then in brackets, the key of the key value pair. Now, if you don't specify a namespace, it will assume it is the same namespace as the task because key value pairs are binded to namespaces. But in this example, I can easily see that we're going to get some data, set our key value pair, my key, and then I can log it to the logs with this simple expression here, KV and then my key. So if I execute that now, we can see here that it does in fact print it out as we would expect. Now, if you would rather not use that expression, you can also get the value with a task and then that task will generate an output containing the key value pair. So if you wanna be able to get that value without using this expression, you can use a separate task to get the value and then use that output later on. In this example here, I'm using that get task. I'm specifying the key, the namespace, and then I can then also access it as an output simply by just using the dot value output. So if I press execute now, we will see that once this has finished getting all that data, we can see that it gets it with the first expression, but then we can see with the task, it gets the same value. And we can go to the outputs tab and we can see right at the bottom here that it does in fact get the value and we can click preview and see the data as we would expect. So very helpful. You can also use a task to get keys by prefix. So if you don't actually know the exact key of the key value pair, then you can put in the start of it and this will return what is remaining in the logs. So if I execute this task, we will easily see that when it gets to the prefix one, it's going to get 
all of them and then it's going to return an array of all of the keys that start with the prefix so if i click edit we'll see that i put in just my and so anything that starts with my will come up so really helpful if you're not sure and you need to be able to filter Lastly, we can also delete the key value pair as a task. So here I've got a simple delete task. I specified the key and the namespace, and then it will delete it. And this will generate an output as well, which will be true or false. So if I click execute, we'll be able to see that it's going to create our key value pair, log it multiple ways, and then it's gonna delete it and return true. And if we go to outputs, we can see that deleted is set to true. And if again, I go to that key value store, we can see that there is nothing there because it was deleted. We can also set and get the key value pairs using the Kestra API as well. In this example here, I can set a key value pair by simply using the command on the screen by just making a put request. And here I can specify namespaces, then our namespace we have in mind, KV to specify the key value store, and then the key of, that we want to set. And then here I can set the value to hello world. So if I was to set this, and then we have a quick look over at Kestra, I can now go to my key namespace here. I can go to the key value store and see that it was set and it was set just now. And then similarly, I can use a get request to get that value. So here I can see that the type was a string and the value was hello world. Similar to the tasks, I can also get all of the keys within a single namespace. So here with this get request, we can see that it's given me all of the keys So here, my key, and when it was created. So if I had multiple in here, it'd give me a nice array of all of them. And lastly, I can also delete my key value pair similar to that task by using a delete request. So here, if I was to run this command, it will return true to show it was deleted, and we can check that in Kestra. Now here in Kestra, if I refresh the page, we can see that that key value pair is no longer there. Last thing to note is you can do those same things that we just did in the tasks and API as well in Terraform using the data source and resources here. Now to round things off, you may remember at the start, I said that you can actually set the value of your key value pair as a JSON, but to use the JSON value inside of your tasks, there's a few extra steps involved. Here, I've got an example where I'm going to set a key value pair with the value as this JSON. To then receive that inside of a task, I then need to use the JSON function here to be able to get it in the correct format. So here, when I execute this, it will get our key value pair, and then I can use the JSON function to be able to then get individual properties outside of that JSON. So as we can see, while this is executing, it has set that, but then we can easily see that the data that was set inside of it was able to be retrieved. And again, we can see that at the bottom here as well. So if you are going to use JSON, you just need to remember to use that JSON function as part of your expression. Hopefully that was helpful and you're gonna start using the key value store inside of your workflows. Let us know in the comments below how you're using the key value store and any thoughts that you have on it. If you have any questions, let us know and don't forget to join our Slack community where you can chat with us there.